Hey there, Daryl here. Just now this game Order of Ataxia Initial Effects has been released and I'm going to read maybe about the first 30 minutes of it. Check it out, see what it's like. For anybody who's never been to my channel, I read everything out loud. So, you know, you can go about your business. You don't have to read the screen if you don't want to. You can just look up every so often to see the pretty pictures. So it could take me a little while to actually decide on the voices because I'm doing this as I go along. I don't really know anything about the story yet. So... Forgive me if it takes me a little bit of time to fall into it. Let's get started. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Dr. Malcolm, it's time for you to get up. You can't sleep all day. I can feel soft hands grabbing my shoulders. It's Valor. I know it is. She's trying to wake me up to face a bright new adventure. Nope. Rest time. Come on, Doc. Up and at him. You're not being paid to sleep on the job. I mean, you're not being paid at all, but the point still stands. I can hear noises off in the distance. She probably turned on the ambient noise CD again. I don't understand the appeal of it, but it is a distraction to the real minds of the project. The project? What was I working on again? Chuckle, buddy old pal. For your own sake, you need to get to your feet. You don't want to be here in a couple seconds. Is the director on his way again? The codger works me harder than any of the other scientists in this department. Who cares what he thinks? I don't recall the last time I saw the director. Why was that? There's the culprit! I was leading the Divergence Project to travel through the planes of the universe. We had succeeded, and I was finally freed from my home. Chuck! I was punished by the gods of the universe for the damage our experiments caused. In exchange for my life, I was to go from plane to plane to restore each world to its rightful state. Oh, that sounds like a really time-consuming job. Valor was my liaison, the one sent to keep an eye on me and judge my actions. A generally unhelpful spirit for solving my problems. We just fixed Garrosh, and we're on to the last plane. That means this isn't my lab. That isn't the soundtrack, and Valor's trying to warn me of. I'm in trouble. I warned you. You thought you'd escape us, thief. Prepare for justice. Welcome to the Plane of Destiny, Chuck. Been nice knowing ya. You are not Rain. What are you doing out here? Helping her escape the guard? What? I'll have you know the last person foolish enough to do so is rotting in the bottommost cells of Stewart Prison. Sounds pretty serious, Doc. Why'd you do it? Shut up. Answer me! I will know if you are telling me the truth. Will she? This hasn't been the first time that a guard falsely accused me of something. The fact that she hasn't skewered me is promising, and means she's willing to listen. Though, I don't know if her... uniform is fitting for a high or low-ranking person. I can tell she's fairly new from the polish of her sword. It's clean, sparkling... It doesn't show the wear or tarnish of constant use. The sword is wavering, as if the hand holding it is trembling. There's just a hint of fear in the girl's amber eyes. She's looking for a reason to back down or to stab me. Listen, miss. You don't deserve to know my name, scoundrel. All right, Lady Guardsman. My name is Charles Malcolm, and this is my assistant, Falor. Hiya. We were on a journey to town from a city far away, but we got lost trying to get there. Thank you so much for your timely rescue. I don't believe you. It's too much of a coincidence to believe. Come on now, relax. We're all friends here. Why were you going to Idis? And what's your trade then, other than being a lying thief? Keep calm, Chuck. Keep prying for information. I'm a crafter. I was hired by an aide of the Lord to build a special machine out of a secret new material that was discovered. I'd tell you what it was, but I was sworn to secrecy. You're really bad at this. Then help out. You are the boss man, Mr. Crafter. A crafter? Huh? Well, that got her attention. I guess they really need craftspeople. Are you the artificer Lady Beta was expecting? She told you of my arrival. Yes, yes. We were heading to Idis to assist Lady Beta. Come on. Prove it. Huh? 
The guardswoman reaches into under the metal collar of her armor and pulls out a necklace on a golden chain. A large red gem decorates the necklace. Probably worth more than most of my lab equipment. If you truly are an artificer, you should be able to tell me what enchantment was placed on this necklace. Oh, uh, tell you the enchantment, right. Can't you do it? Of course I can. Let me see it. I need to be able to touch it. I pull myself to my feet. Not as scared of her sword. Even if it isn't a full set of armor, I can outrun her. I'm not sure how I got into this situation, but I've got a good feeling about my sprinting capabilities. Of course, I can't tell what enchantment is on it. I found out several planes ago that there is absolutely no magical abilities in my blood. Coming from Earth meant I had no ability to use magical weaves of worlds. Still, I do have one way to identify enchantments. Try to do anything funny, and you'll regret every moment of your short life. I won't, trust me. <sighs> I don't think she does trust you. Well, well, well. What enchantment is it, oh great and powerful artificer? Please, I need you to identify this. It's gold. Valor, she's gonna lock me away in a jail cell for a long, long time, for trumped up charges. Please, just tell me what you can see on it. Though I lack any magical capabilities, being an avatar of the gods has given Falor impressive feats of magical powers. If she wants to, I know she could slay this guard by blinking her eyes. The problem is... I don't know. It really isn't my place to interfere. I'm just an observer, after all. I can't begin to count the number of times I've been in a dire situation, desperate for help, and that's the sort of response I get. It's no wonder she was tasked with such a pathetic job. Leaving the crust of the gods to watch me bumble around is a punishment fitting for only the worst residents. If I go to jail, I'll be there for a long time. I could be there for decades depending on the punishment dealt out by the local government. That sucks to be you. You can't leave me until I complete my task, can you? Where do you think you'll be stuck for the next decades? You might be able to go into a specter form, but you'll still be tied to me in that cell. No fancy foods, no luxurious baths, no beautiful men to serve you grapes while fanning you with palm leaves on a beach, just mush and filth. I go down, you suffer as well. We've been over this. Hmm. All right, I'll bless you with my overabundance of wisdom and save you from yourself. Thanks, oh wise one. The enchantment is weak. Someone broke it with remarkable force. It's hard to tell, but... I think it was a protection from spells. Protection from spells? On a simple necklace like this? Is the weave of this world that overabundant? No. Whoever made this was a wizard of extraordinary power. It's a very distinctive touch. That's all you're getting from me. Good luck, hero. I have determined the enchantment. It's a simple fireball necklace, right? Where did you get this? A peddler in the markets. This is not a simple necklace. Though it may be faded and spell-cracked, I can tell that a protection from spell spell was placed on it. How it was broken, I cannot fathom. <sighs> her shoulders slumped a little bit, and she used her sword to stabilize herself. I don't believe she expected the truth from me. I mean, she didn't get it, but she got a truth that supports my continued existence. I don't believe. Can you fix it? Can I? I know it's an outrageous request, especially when the lady is your client, but please, could you fix it? Fix it? If you fix it, that will make everything right. Please, I beg of you. From threatening to begging. Protection from spells, yoink. A blur zips out of the trees, and I find myself once again back on the ground. I always thought it was just a memento. I can't believe you were hiding something so powerful under that breastplate. Oh, I like her already. Rain! This will look nice next to your staff of wisdom, Spikehead. Hand over everything you stole now, elf, and I swear, I'll find a way not to slay you where you stand. Tempting offer, Spikehead. I told you, stop calling me that! Because that's a clever way to convince the thief to stop. I got an offer of my own. 
You all stand here looking stupid while I escape. Like hell. Thanks again, my little artificer. Hope you have more treasures next time. My eyes! A flash bomb. Perhaps a spell. Either way, I know this trick. I lunge out to grab the elf and improve my standing with local law enforcement. But all I feel is the flurrying of her scarf as she scampers away. Not again! Which way did she go? Oh, I think it's too late now. That way. She's not getting away with that. I refuse to let this happen. <sighs> Admiring the view. Sorry. I was just thinking about the elf. Admiring the front view? <laughs> Those markings on her skin. They look familiar. Sure, you were looking at the markings. I totally believe you. The markings. I'd be mad not to have recognized them. Valora might have just seen tattoos on a supple tan body, but I could comprehend them. They were the same engravements I used to open the portal. They were the same markings that led me on this crazy trek through the plains. I need to figure out what chaos I caused here with my science. I need to have my starting point. We're going to apprehend that girl. Already smitten by the swordswoman. Young love is blossoming in the air. Sure is. After her. Guard. <sighs> hey, are you alright? She got away. Are you sure? She could still be in the trees again. Not this time. The criminal reign is known for not overstaying her welcome. Why now, she'll have taken it to her lair. <sighs> we'll find her. She can't escape Lady Beta's wrath forever. That's good to hear. I'm sorry about earlier. That thief has been a major thorn in our side for weeks now. Lady Beta is losing her patience, and we've all been suffering her anger. It's understandable. If there's anything we can do to help you, just ask. Thank you. I forgot to introduce myself, Sir Artificer. My name is Sophia. I'm one of Lady Beta's loyal handmaidens. Please, let me escort you back to the castle. Thank you for your generosity. So, what's your terrible plan this time? Oh, ye of little faith. We need to get that elf. Sweet, sweet love. Those markings are related to my project. I bet my entire lab that whatever I need to fix involves that elf. Oh, I don't know, does it? You should just say yes. You could make this a lot easier on me. I could. Am I? No. You are finally starting to catch on after a dozen worlds. Is this Idis? Yes. Is this her hometown? It is. I was born and raised here. My family settled down here a few years before I was born. My parents were merchants in the West Island Trading Group, so we were fortunate to be able to live inside the walls. Who lives outside the walls? Bandits, rogues, criminals. Poor people, underprivileged, probably elves. Serfs and those who have lost ranks and titles? Almost all proper townsfolk live in the castle interior. Do elves live inside the walls as well? Some, I think. I told you. If they work hard, they can find themselves on the interior. The lady is always looking for those with talent and magic to help her with her experiments. Experiments? That sounds... foreboding. Nothing of the sort. My lady follows a very strict code with her explorations into the fields of magic. Not the first time I've heard that. Not the first dimension this week I've heard that. Don't worry, we aren't using any ancient magics paired with your portal technology to summon demonic entities to end our world. I swear, I'm just going to kill the mage right off the bat if we start going in that direction again. I'm not reenacting Diablo again and wandering through the pits of hell. Fulor, don't you notice something weird about this place? Yeah, I'm looking right at you. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> -ha. There's something wrong with the people. The trade. Seems to be doing fine to me. That's because you only care about stuffing her gullet. The goods are of lower quality. Items of above average value are notably absent from all but the most prestigious of stalls. We wandered through some slums on the way in here, but it seems like everyone's suffering in some sort of fashion. This castle is struggling. Elves. Sophia, when did this rain start preying upon the castle? 
a few weeks, maybe two months at most. Has there been anything strange leading up to it? Droughts? Or perhaps an increase in overall bandit activity? Thankfully, no. Idis has been the same way. It has always been since I lived here. Rain just appeared one day and started stealing from our merchants. Ah, oh, so did she come here from, from another dimension too? For the last few days, she's been preying on the castle. It's had everyone in uproar. I didn't think you'd still come after the suit of armor that the lady wanted you to work on was stolen. I'm, uh, not one to abandon a client after contracted. That's good. She'll be most pleased. The sincerity in her voice is palpable. Sophia really does care about her lady's happiness, even if I can't determine if that's out of fear or loyalty. Probably both. If I'm going to survive this encounter, I need to figure out both how I can convince Valor to keep up that story that I have some sort of magical talent and get this Lady Beta's assistance in apprehending the thief. Simple enough. It's like being a grad student again. Are those frozen melons? Are they? Yes, Idis's melons are famous. They just came into season only this moon cycle. Melons, huh? <sighs> oh... Why are you walking toward me for that? Do you want a melon? That was kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> You're not the only one who wants a pair of melons, Chuck. <laughs> what did I say about that melon talk? Want me to buy one for you? You would? No. <laughs> we have to get you back somehow sometimes. Do I look like I have local currency? That's why we have to barter. What do you have to barter? We lost most of our stuff in the swamp world, remember? Excuse me, sir. How many melons could I get if I trade this annoying human as your servant? Come on. Aww. Your assistant is a little... rude, isn't she? You don't know the half of it, Sophia. But a powerful artificer must have some reason for keeping such a disrespectful assistant. Lady Beta would have me flogged if I tried to saw her. Well, you see, it's because old Chuck has absolutely no skills in... In taste. And if she wants to continue tasting things other than mush, she would please, please, please hold her tongue while we're here. Huh. <laughs> please wait here. I'll inform Lady Beta of your arrival. Maybe I should turn transitions on because... I don't know, you're going from scene to scene like crazy. Let me turn transitions all on. On. See what kind of difference that makes. Okay, I guess it's just them fading in and out. Not bad, not bad. Doesn't hold a candle to my palaces. But for some backwater world, it has a certain rustic charm. Rustic? This chamber could hold my entire house. Your world is by far the saddest one I've ever visited. Grand, there is a concept lost on your feeble minded, magic devoid people. Hey. We made some pretty impressive castles on Earth. The last castle your people made was hundreds of years in the past. Now you build really narrow, really tall buildings that have no concept of magnificent presence. You all look up, never out. Looking out instead of towards space was how I ended up being chased by flying lions, casting fireballs at me. And that was funny. Seeing a magical pleb running and screaming that a couple of cute kitties were going to om nom nom him was by far one of the best memories of our adventures. I nearly died. Nearly. Please don't sound so depressed about that. You'll get punished if I died. Yeah, but then I could be back home. In real castles. With real company. Who don't bribe me for my magical powers. You seem to enjoy the bribes. <sighs> Valor turns away, her interest in this conversation waning. Now that I have a free moment, I can go back to enjoying the presence of this beautiful hall. <sighs> or would, if she hadn't also killed my interest. So what if Earth doesn't build as many awesome castles as it used to? We've done plenty of feats of architecture. I don't blame her for wanting to go home. There's nothing more I want than to put this adventure behind me and go back to studying reactions of electrons in my lab. Running water, science that makes sense instead of law-defying magic, no killer animals or deranged bandits. I miss home. One more mission. One more problem to fix. Internet. I'm coming home soon. 
Pepsi, Cheetos, and YouTube for days. Ah, the things you miss when you're away from home. At least the view is nice from here. Reminds me of my trip to Germany. Yes, that's a really nice view. She's pretty. Except for the mage in the courtyard. I don't remember fire-wielding mages with magnificent... Spells dancing in the grass. Yeah, spells. She's the first person I've seen here who seems truly happy. There's something carefree in the way she spins the arc of flames, letting flames dance around her. Valor always has that same smile on her face whenever she gets to let loose and utilize her own remarkable magical powers. I've always asked her what was so delightful about it, but she'd just smile and taunt me. But seeing that mage... I can't help but think it might be the power that it gives. Having such a destructive force of unbridled power under your command and using it to do nothing but tricks is tantalizing. When I get home, I'm going to find some way to reintroduce magic to our world. Valor said it was impossible, but the rest of her good buddies also said it was impossible to escape from Earth. Ah, so if one impossibility is possible, then others might be possible as well. Huh. <laughs> Letting my own type of scientific magic shine does bring a certain pleasure to it as well. I wonder if I could talk with that cheerful mage and see if I can learn some tricks from her. I have a feeling she'd make for good company. What kind of tricks do you want to learn from her? Sadly, I only get a few more seconds to appreciate her fire dance before a couple of guards interrupt her dance and lead her towards the castle. I suppose there are only so many hours in a day mages can waste losing themselves to magic. Oh, this is probably the lady we're supposed to meet. They're probably just bringing her up here to talk to me right now, right? A minute later, Sophia runs up out of breath. Forgive me, Lady Beta is ready to see you. There's a subtle shift in the demeanor of the court. The idle chatter is dying down, and everyone's watching the door that Sophia darted through. Our host must have arrived. Be on your best behavior, Falor. So, don't summon dire hounds and sick them on her? Preferably. I'll consider it. May I present to you our most wise and gracious lady, Lady Beta Abagora of Idis. Whoa, it's flamey. Sure enough, the gray-haired mage from the courtyard is striding in. There's something different about her, though. There's no cheerfulness, no light-hearted movements. She moves with precision. It's because she's on the job now. Her step's heavy and uniform. Though no scowl on her face, I get the distinct feeling it's a natural emotion for her. No life burns in those blood-red eyes of hers, and dealing with an iron wall. Most troubling, though. Do you recognize those engravings on her gloves and robes? If it isn't on the test at the end, I don't care. Well, you might care. Those are more inscriptions from the portal device. But don't tell me. She's messing up the planescape as well. I don't want to follow more of you humans around. Maybe not. But both the elf and the ruler of this land bear the markings. This might be what we're here to solve. Step forward. No emotion. No expression. Just a direct order. My lady, I present to you the great artificer Charles and his assistant Valor. They come to us from far beyond the eastern lands. <sighs> they are quite talented, my lady. I gave them a test to validate my necklace's enchantment, and they answered with no hesitation. May I see the necklace? I regret to inform you that the culprit Rain stole it. And where did this transpire? She's sounding calm, but I've lived under enough tyrannical lead scientists to know what's coming. In the forest outside of town. The forest where you were supposed to be pursuing the thief. Here it comes. I, I was... The royal guard and I... Instead of doing your duty, you were asking personal favors from renowned artificers. That's not it. I found them and... Found them? They were lost and I needed... To accost them, quite likely. Could you not see from their demeanor that they were unlikely in alliance with the elven thieves? Instead, you lost more treasures, the thief, and wasted valuable time from a man you knew your lady had business with. And where is my scout captain? Have I not said we need to increase our ranks in the forest? How does such an important guest get lost? I don't know. You are my personal handmaiden, Sophia. 
These failures reflect the failure upon myself. I'm so sorry, Lady Beta. Please, forgive me. I feel a great many punishments are in order for my retainers. A great many. I shall personally lead the scouting. And leave me without my handmaiden. N no! What do you mean is that I'll... I lean in close to Falor. How long is this babble going to go on? Never propose ideas when they go into berserk mode. Just apologize and cower. You humans still confuse me. One more failure, Sophia, and you'll face the fires of my wrath. <sighs> I will now attend to my belated business that should have been concluded weeks ago if my servants knew their duties. Yes, my lady. That means clear the hall. Yes, my lady. Maybe it is fear of being turned into a bonfire, but the grand hall is emptied in seconds. Only Lady Beta, myself, and Falur remain. Now that we are alone, who are you? I am the Great Art. Your babble might have fooled my inept maiden, but I am not so foolish. I can feel your auras. You have as much magical ability as a peasant. More of a pleb, maybe. And you, I sense a great magical presence around you, but nothing like I have ever felt before. Neither of you are from our world. Once again, very matter-of-fact. It's going to be hard to bluff her without a story that Falor is really the artificer. I don't even know if she would play along. Well, what's the plan? Answer me to your purpose, and I will determine your fates. Who says we aren't? I mean, you told them we are. Tell me your origin or die by flames. I will not be played with any further. Don't worry, Chuck. You can totally take her. I'm counting on you. I've got a better idea. Lady Beta, I'm a researcher from a world far from this one. During several experiments, I tore holes into several worlds. As the gods of the Planescape were not pleased with my behavior, I was tasked with going to each of these worlds and cleaning up the damage from my experiments. I don't know how I screwed up your world, but if I'm here, then I did something. Valor here is an avatar of the gods, who is to monitor my task and when she feels like it, assist with its completion. So we just told the truth. I'm the magical one here. He's just a pleb. A smart pleb, but a pleb just the same. The average person would laugh at my claim. Most would have called me crazy and a con artist with a weird assistant. It wouldn't be the first time. But Lady Beta is reacting exactly how I hoped she would. That mask of neutrality hasn't cracked in the slightest since our court left. If she is genuinely considering my story, or just tell Beta is to barbecue us, I couldn't say. What is your mission here? My mission? To fix things. Fix what? He has... Plenty of clues, my lady. I seek the apprehension of the thief, Rain. I suppose she holds the clues to fixing this world. If it would please you, I suggest a temporary alliance to bring this thief to justice. She is a menace to your society from what I've gathered from Sophia, and a piece toward me getting back home. You propose an intriguing offer, Sir Artificer. For now, I will consider your proposal, and offer you the hospitality of my lands. My only request is that your Artificer skills are restricted to me and me alone. Am I clear? Guess that answers my earlier question. Yes, my lady. I am yours to command. And we'll go ahead and end our first video there. Seems like a reasonable place to stop. Wow, they just throw you right into the thick of it in this, huh? I feel like I should do more research here. Is this a sequel? I didn't know it was if it is. And I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to do. I'll do a couple episodes on this, see how it goes. See if I like the story. I'll record a bit more tonight. Can't really record so much right now. I had to record around a lot of noise here <laughs> to record during the day. Alright, well, I hope to see you in the next video, or in some of my other ones, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.